Hi, this is Nick Bizai. This is the ninth video in a series of videos called Practical Applications for Water Treatment Plant Operators. These are exam questions that uh, tend to show up on uh, your licensing exams. We're here practicing to uh, get ready for our exams this fall. So let's take a look at uh, the screen that I'm going to share with you. And we'll get into this presentation. And again, we're using practical math. Uh, examples from the Lake County, Ohio water treatment plant, Bacon Road water treatment plant, and we want to thank them for their kind contributions to helping us out here. Okay, so this is again in the ninth in a series of license exam training modules for water plant operators. And for all of these modules, uh, if you've been going through them, uh, you'll see that I have included a table here for conversions between standard units and metric units, U.S. conversion to factors, uh, that you can go back and forth if you run into some, some of these issues on some of the problems. So you can always refer to that. We also put in some information about the Bacon Road plant here. Uh, this is a 9MGD conventional water treatment plant. They don't recycle their spent filter backwash water. Uh, in the month, they treated a little over 89 million gallons. And we got some filter information on this, this module here. We see that the unit filter run volume which is the number of gallons produced per square foot of filter surface area during the entire run is going to be listed. And we'll show you those values in the, in the next slide. Um, it says that the water treatment plant has four dual media filters and they are listed at 11 feet by 33 feet each. Uh, it says that the water treatment plant uses an allen polymer blend for coagulation. The specific gravity of that solution is 1.295 and it is 45% dry basis alum. Using that product and treating Lake Erie water, the water plant produced 696,949 gallons of sludge for the month. That was 0.9% uh, average percent solids. They sent it to their thickeners uh, and added a polymer to it. And the final solids that they pumped up their goons out of the thickeners was 8.8%. So with that information, let's go ahead and uh, launch into some of these questions here. Uh, we see that we have filter operation data at this time. We got the hours of operation for each filter, the average unit filter run volumes, the number of backwashes. Notice for filter number three and the third column, they did not give us the hours of operation. So we're gonna try to figure that out as we go along. It shows how much backwash water we used uh, in gallons. And of course the turbidities, the highest recorded turbidities out of each filter, which looked pretty good to me. Okay, so let's go to uh, question number one. And remember when I throw these questions up at you, you can always pause the video if you want to try to work them out with pencil and paper and a calculator and then start the video and see how I come up with an answer. So the first one is question number one. We mentioned that uh, AWWA suggests that a typical dual media filter ought to be able to be backwashed properly with somewhere between 100 and 150 gallons of water for every square foot of the filter. So if we know how many square feet we have, and we divide that into the amount of gallons that we use, it should come out to somewhere between 100 and 150. And that's a good operational uh, value to have because if your operators are using too little or too much water, this value will tell you that. So the question says, let's go ahead and calculate that value for filter number two. So we got to go back in the tables and get, dig out some information. From that table, we see that filter number two was backwashed four times. And for those four backwashes, we used 185,644 gallons of water. So the gallons per backwash would be that 185,644 divided by those four washes, where on average we use about 46,411 gallons for every wash. So from the table we see that the filters then are listed as 11 feet by 33 feet or about 363 square feet each. So I'm simply going to take the amount of water that I used, the 46,411 gallons divided by the 363 square feet, and I'm coming up with about 128 gallons per square foot, which is right in that range that AWA suggests. So that's, that's good. Hope you did well on that. Let's go ahead and do question number two. Question number two is asking, what is the average filtration rate in gallon per minute per square foot and in centimeters per minute for filter number four? If you recall, for some of the previous videos that we've done, we're trying to talk in terms of uh, Filtration velocity rather than just uh, filtration loading rate, which is a more old fashioned way of saying things. So let's go ahead and work that through. Filter number four operated for 382 hours. 
It had an average unit filter run volume of 15,629 gallons per square foot per filter run. So if I take that 50, 15,629 gallons per square foot per run and multiply it by the four runs and mention that each filter was 363 square feet, I come up with 22,693,308 gallons during the four runs. That's how much water was produced. If I take those gallons and divide it by the total hours that the, that the table says that the filter number four operated, and then divide by 60 minutes per hour, I come up with 990 gallon per minute average operating rate for the filter while it was in service, 990 gallons per minute. So I can take the 990 gallons per minute divided by the square foot of a filter, which I've determined to be 363, and I see that I have a filtration rate for filter number four on average of 2.73 gallon per minute per square foot. Now they wanted that changed also to centimeters per minute. So you remember from the table, uh, previous tables, we know that all we need to do is multiply by 4.07 and we'll come up with a centimeters per minute value. So it's 2.73 gallon per minute per square foot times 4.07, comes up with 11.1 .1 centimeters per minute. Now let's go ahead and show the proof of that. If you want to prove that, if you don't just want to accept the 4.07, in other words, where did the 4.07 come from? Well, you take the 2.73 gallon per minute per square foot, change the square foot into cubic feet, or change the gallons into cubic feet by dividing by 7.48, and you come up with cubic feet per minute per square feet. So square feet are going to cancel out in the numerator and denominator, leaving you in feet per minute. Now you have a velocity. All you need to do is change the feet per minute to centimeters per minute. I'm going to take those feet and, and multiply by 2.54 centimeters per inch, change those feet to inches, and I come up with the same 11.1 .1 centimeters per minute. So that's, that's an effort to get operators to start thinking in terms of uh, filter velocities rather than filter loading rates. Still, it's the same value. It's worked in a different way. All right, let's go ahead and move to question number three. It's asking, how many milliliters per minute alum polymer blend should be fed to achieve a dosage of 20 milligrams per liter dry basis alum when you're treating 3.2 million gallons per day. So in other words, they use this product alum polymer blend, only part of which is alum. The rest is, is water and the rest and some of it is polymer. But we're going to find in the table how much of that is actually alum, dry basis alum, and then we can go from there. If I go into the tables, first of all, I, I took the, I did a basic dosage problem first. Let's do that first. They took the 20 milligram per liter dry basis alum that they're, they're wanting us to find and multiplying by the 8.34 and the 3.2 MGD. And I would have to feed 533.76 pounds per day dry basis alum, according to this question. Now I go into the table and I see that the alum polymer blend is listed as 45% dry basis alum. In other words, of this liquid product, only 45% of it is dry basis alum. The rest is the water that it was dissolved in and the polymer that was added to it. If I take the 533.76 pounds of dry basis alum required and divide it by that percentage, I come up with the amount of alum polymer blend that I would have to feed in pounds per day, which was 1,186.13. But now they're asking for milliliters per minute. So I'm gonna to have to take that pounds and convert it to gallons and take the gallons and convert it to minutes. So here's how I did that. I take the amount of pounds per day that I needed to, to feed that I just calculated, and I multiplied it by the fact that one gallon weighs 8.34 pounds times the specific gravity 1.295, all of which I found from the table. It's about 10.8 pounds per gallon. So that tells me that I would need about 100, almost 110 gallons per day. Now it's just a simple matter of taking that 110 gallons per day or 109.82 gallons per day and turning it into minutes and into milliliters. And here's how I did that. I take the 109.82 gallons, multiply by 3,785 milliliters per gallon, and I come up with a feed rate of 415,684.2 milliliters per day needed to be fed. Now it's just a simple matter of taking that, that and dividing it by the 1,440 minutes in a day. And I come up with a value of 288.6 milliliters per minute that it needed to be fed to achieve what was in, asked in the question. Now I hope you did well on that. Let's go ahead and move to question number four. 
Question number four is asking, how many gallons of thickened sludge were pumped to the lagoons in the month? If you go into the tables, you'll see that the plant produces sludge coming out of the said basins, and that goes over to a thickener. A uh, thickener is, uh, takes these solids, liquid sludge, adds polymer to it, lets it settle for a while, and then the supernate is decanted off to NPDES permit uh, discharge. And the thickened sludge is then pumped over to the lagoon. So what that does is, is allow clear water to be, be sent away back to nature, and only the solids or thickened solids being sent to the lagoon. So that's less amount of solids that you, less amount of sludge that you have to uh, send over to the landfill. So from the table, we see that the water plant produced 696,949 gallons of sludge for the month. And that sludge was 0.9% average percent solids. I like these kind of problems because it allows you to use the formula D1N1 equals D2N2. Uh, which means the original volume and concentration is going to equal the final volume and concentration, and there's a relationship between them. We see that after thickening those solids, the solids content increased to 8.8%. So in other words, this almost 700,000 gallons of sludge was very thin at 0.9%, and after adding a polymer and thickening it, we got it up to 8.8%. So some of the solid, some of the water must have been disposed of. How much sludge would be left if we got the concentration up to 8.8%? And that's what they're asking you in the question. So we set up the formula V1N1 equals V2N2. And when you, when you use a formula like that, you've always got to have three values, and you're always looking for the fourth. In this case, we're looking for V2. So we're going we're gonna to solve for V2 by multiplying V1 and N1, dividing it by N2. And that's what I do here. I take the V2 equals the 696,949 gallons times the 9% or 0.09%, or 0.9%, I'm sorry, 0.009 divided by 0.088, I come up with about 71,280 gallons of sludge sent to the lagoons. All right, question number five, and this is the last one coming up. It says, if the average filtration velocity for filter number three was 10.8 centimeters per minute, how many gallons of water did it filter in a month and how many hours did it operate? If you go into the tables, you see that they did not give us the hours of operation for filter number three like they did the other three filters. So we need, they want us to derive that. So we're gonna do a question like this. We're gonna to have to make certain assumptions based on the data that was given to us. There's nothing much else we can do. And here, here's the way I work through this. I took that 10.8 centimeters per minute and divided it by the 4.07. You, you may recall a couple of questions earlier, we multiplied a number by 4.07 to change centimeters per minute or gallons per minute per square foot to centimeters per minute. Now I'm doing the reverse of that. I'm gonna take the centimeters per minute and divide it by the 4.07. And it comes up to a filtration rate, filtration loading rate of 2.65 gallon per minute per square foot. That's our filtration rate. Now from the table, we see a couple of things. I see that the average unit filter run volume for filter number three was 14,493 gallons per square foot per run. We also see that in filter number three that it was washed three times. Now here's the assumption I'm making. If it was washed three times, that implies that it ran three times. I can find no other data that tells us anything different than that. So I'm gonna to have to make the assumption that we had three filter runs and those runs were characterized by a, a unit filter run volume of 14,493. So if I take that 14,493 gallons per square foot per run to multiply by those three filter runs and multiply by the 363 square feet, I'm going to come up with a value of 15,782,277 gallons filtered in the month. So that answers the first question, how many gallons did it filter in the month? And of course, based on the assumption that it, there were three filter runs. Now they wanna know how many hours did it operate? Well, we gotta make some more assumptions here, but we're gonna say this. We're gonna take that filtration rate of 2.65 gallon per minute per square foot, multiply by the 363 square feet. And I'm gonna say that on average, that filter operated at 962 gallons per minute. Well, I know how many gallons that I filtered in the month. And I divide that by the 962 gallons per minute, I'm gonna get about 273 hours of operation. I hope you did well on that. So once again, thank you um, to the Lake County, Ohio Department of Utilities at Bacon Road Water Treatment Plant for lending us their data. We hope you did well on these. Look forward to some future videos that we're gonna put out. And um, 
if you come back to this video or to other videos, you'll see um, some other links that are going to apply here. They're going to come up that you can click on. You can access more of these videos in this series or some other series that we've put together. And with that, I hope you've, uh, hope you've gotten all of these problems correctly and look forward to seeing you in the future. Hope that's been helpful to you. Check back. Okay. Thanks.